How do you feel when I tell you that you can change the world? How do you feel when I tell you that you can save someone's life? How do you feel when I tell you that tonight you will know how? But before I tell you how you can save someone's life, I must tell you why you should. I'd like to introduce someone to you. Someone you know. Someone who's not a stranger to any one of us. Shocked, astonished. Yes, you do know him. Isn't the picture horrifying to look at? But reality is devastating. Lucky people like you and me don't need to deal with him on a daily basis. But there are millions of people around the world who deal with him several times a day. Let me kill the suspense and tell you who he is. This is hunger. If hunger had a face, this is how it would look like. This devil strikes each one of us every three to four hours. Now, what happens is, every time we are unable to satisfy him, it gets bigger, aggressive, and harmful. Ever been angry when you're hungry? It's because this guy is roaring from your inside. Let's understand how big the problem hunger is, how serious it is, how widespread it is, and whether it is even worth our attention or not. I'd like to share with you some facts that have gone beyond our imagination. We know that people die to diseases like tuberculosis, AIDS, even malaria. But do we know how many people die each year due to hunger? We've come to a point where we are comparing hunger with life-threatening diseases, and it's alarming that hunger kills twice as more. Another heartbreaking fact, the continent we live in is two-thirds hungry. Asia, one of the world's largest continents, two-thirds of the people are starving. This is evidence telling us that we haven't set our priorities right. A consequence to hunger is malnutrition. Let's look at the, its effects across the globe. One billion people, hungry and malnourished. The world's not heading in the right direction. I'm sure most of us have seen a picture like that on social media. And what do we do? Either we say, oh, that's sad, life's tough, and we scroll down. Many at times, we scroll without saying anything, which means we kind of ignore a harsh reality. And then we stumble upon a post like that. And we're like, Mom, do you know what? Kylie Jenner just gave birth to a baby girl, and isn't she cute? And that becomes breaking news. But what's not breaking news is that every five seconds, a child under the age of five dies to hunger. What's not breaking news is that every 10 seconds, we lose a child to hunger. And what's not breaking news is that at that rate, this room will be empty in less than an hour. So what lacks is significance to this problem. Because in some little corners of our minds, we've accepted the fact that there are going to be people and children living and dying hungry. But what we need to understand is that Every time we lose a child to hunger, we must hold our heads down in shame because that is the death of humanity. While when we lose a child to a disease or a natural disaster, that's unavoidable. Unlike a child who dies hungry, which is preventable. So, who is this child? Where does she come from? How old is she? What race is she of? 
What's her name? All these questions don't really matter because there's one thing that's most significant than any of these questions, which is the fact that she's hungry, malnourished, and dehydrated. The last time she ate food was probably days back. And so the real question should be, would she even survive to eat her next meal? She left having a meal up to chance, or maybe even destiny. But having a meal shouldn't be a probability question that we solve or a lottery that we strike. It should be a right that we deserve. Each year, we produce more than enough food for 7 billion people to eat. Yet, people die hungry each second. Let's understand why hunger is the world's biggest health issue. It's not a disease, not contagious. Hunger spreads only if ignored and not addressed. I truly think that hunger is gigantic primarily because poverty exists everywhere. Hunger exists everywhere. A hungry person is hungry because he or she has been unable to solve their problem. And secondly, because we fail to take this as our responsibility. A hungry person has exhausted all their means, resources, and energies, and yet has been unsuccessful in resolving their problem. Therefore, it becomes our duty and responsibility to do whatever little we can, or as much as we can, because only then can the problem hunger be resolved and eventually even become non-existing. Now, something that you're probably thinking of is, yeah, but I'm not responsible for them being in this condition. They may not be in this condition because of you, but they can surely get out of this condition because of you because you are capable, you are competent, you are educated, you have the resources, and most importantly, you have a heart that's willing. We've heard our parents say, finish everything that's on your plate because there are millions of children around the world who do not get any food to eat. Let's reevaluate that today. We are under this misconception that by finishing everything that's on our plate means that we've helped solve poverty. Have we ever questioned that a second time? Today, we will. The hard fact is that anything we eat or throw away doesn't give or take anything, directly or indirectly, from the hungry child crying out there who's in need of food. We need to do something beyond just finishing everything that's on our plate, because clearly, that's not helping. As mankind, we've progressed incredibly. We've walked on the moon, reached Mars, and even discovered another Earth. But we've been unable to ensure that no one dies hungry. We've been unable to eradicate poverty from every inch of this Earth, we've been unable to solve a daunting problem that's existed for centuries. We say, as a society, we've prospered. How have we prospered when one section of our society is living in abundance while the other is dying hungry at the count of each second? <coughs> the ultimate solution to a huge problem like hunger lies in the simplicity of three words. I call it the three E formula. The power that these three words have, it's incredible. The first E stands for enlighten, each individual, male or female, educated or not, healthy or disabled, has some strength, some skill, some potentiality not only to survive, but also to succeed. 
one must enlighten these individuals of the skills that they possess and help them enhance these skills, which brings us to the next E of empower. As they say, knowledge is power. One must work on the strengths and skills that these individuals have, sharpen these skills, maybe even teach the skills if needed, so that they can generate enough income to help their family out of poverty and at least meet their basic needs. Now, in order to practice the skill that they've learned and enhanced, they need resources, bringing us to the last E of equip. They've identified their skill. They've enhanced their skill. Now it's time to make a career out of this skill. To do that, they require materials, resources, equipment, so that they can initiate a cycle to earn a living. By opting this method of solving poverty, we ensure that we give them independence. We make them self-dependent. We make them confident that they can lead respectful lives the way we do. In metaphoric terms, we teach them how to fish instead of giving them the fish. This also means that we eradicate poverty from its roots forever. In the last 15 minutes that I've spoken in, I don't know what we've gained, but I know what we've lost. We've lost 90 poor, innocent, hungry children as I was speaking. I know if we all came together, we could have definitely saved them. Today, when you step out of that door, I don't want you to be thinking about me and saying, oh, that was a well to talk, or oh my god, what was she saying? I got completely bored. I want you to be thinking about them and about how you can help them, how you can help them out of this problem, how you can give them a better future. Because they hope that we help them. I'd like to end with a quote that I read from Tony Robbins, which says, if you change nothing, nothing will change. And on this note, I come to the end of my talk. Remember, hunger kills, kill hunger. Thank you so much for being such a lovely audience tonight. Have a lovely evening.